close to 200 years have passed. Since Springfield was hit hard by the cholera epidemic in 1833. But much of the city's landscape remains the same, only the names have changed. We're very proud of our downtown Main Street, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Very preserved. And this used to be a department store back in the day. 139 over there used to be a restaurant called Snappy Grill. Judge Executive of Washington County Tim Graves tells the story of Lewis Sansbury. In 1833, a 27-year-old Sansbury, an enslaved man, found himself holding the keys to the city in the midst of an epidemic. So the cholera was really bad, and, and I think the first episode, there was 80 people lost their lives to it. And Mr. Sandsbury cared for all those. And the, the merchants up and down Main Street, when they left, they pitched him their keys so he could take care of the buildings. So he had keys to the town. Louis Sandsbury, with the help of another slave, Matilda Sims, ran the town's hotel and cared for the more than 100 sick people. The lady that cooked at the local hotel would make the meals, and Louis would take them around town and distribute them to the people that were able to eat that weren't sick. When they would pass away, him and Matilda Sims would care for the bodies the best they could and wrap them in sheets and take them and bury them on Cemetery Hill. Because mm -hmm. nobody else wanted to be around the bodies because they were afraid to get them themselves. And how Mr. Sandsbury and Mr. Sims kept from getting it all those years, I don't know. The epidemic ended and people came back to town thankful for Louis Sandsbury. In 1845, when Lewis's owner died, the town purchased his freedom, then gifted him a blacksmith shop. The description states it's on the corner of Walnut and Main before you get to Rush Branch, which is right over there beside the post office. So we believe this to be the lot. He also bought a house, still a home for a family to this day. And here, the story could have ended. But as a free man, a business owner and property owner, Lewis Sansbury once again found himself in the midst of a cholera epidemic. As the story goes on, several years later, the pandemic hit again and the same thing happened. So as a free man and a property owner, he cared for the town again and cared for the town sick. The people who died during the epidemic are buried in mass graves along the road leading up to Cemetery Hill. Upon entering St. Rose, the headstone in his memory is the first to greet you. Not marking the spot that he's buried, but the 106 lives that he cradled until their deaths. Now, I just like to get the story out about what one man can do and how he inspired me as, as reading the story to someone being that kind and putting his own life on the line for people that hadn't necessarily been really kind to him because an enslaved person is not being treated kind. And he showed a merciful act of kindness to those people. While little is known about his personal life, there's no question the legacy of a man who did right by his neighbors again and again lives on. In Springfield, Kentucky with photojournalist Nick Goldring, I'm Haley Minogue, WHAS 11 on your side. We're gonna be bringing you moments that matter during Black History Month all month long right here on WHAS 11.